V ime Otca i Sveti Svetova Duha. Slavi su su Hristu. Slavni vike. My dear brothers, I think I mentioned to you earlier this, uh, this week that uh, in May I uh, led a pilgrimage from the Stanford Empirky to uh, uh, Greece and to Turkey. And the title uh, of this, or the name of this pilgrimage was In the Footsteps of St. Paul. And uh, I remember that one day that we um, had gotten to Turkey and we were in northwest Turkey along the, uh, uh, the shore of the Aegean Sea. And we had just actually passed um, the place uh, where the ancient city of uh, Choi stood at one time. And uh, actually on the beach there, there is a huge Trojan horse. This is just as, as an aside. A huge wooden Trojan horse, horse which it is the, with the exact the model replica of the same horse that was used in filming the recent uh, movie about 10 years ago, Troy, with Brad Pitt. And they, after the filming, they moved it to, uh, to, to the actual place where the uh, city of Troy once stood. But that's just an aside. And then a few more, five miles farther south than that, we claim, came to another place uh, uh, where um, a great city had once stood. And the name of the city was Alexandria Troyes. And uh, 2,000 years ago, it was a huge city. In fact, they estimated it had a population of about 200,000 people. It was a major seaport. And even uh, the Emperor Constantine, uh, he was thinking about even naming uh, the city of Alexandria Troy as his capital rather than uh, Constantinople. So it was really a very major and important center. Uh, now though, there is very little left, very little visible of that once thriving huge city and metropolis. Everything is overgrown. And really, over the site of the city, which they say covers uh, something in, in excess of about uh, 1,000 acres, everything is overgrown, and there's a very, very thick, sort of a low scrub, sort of a, a oak forest, which is very thick and dark. And so there's nothing much th uh, left there at all. Everything, the city there is buried under hundreds of years of, of, uh, of debris and time. And they haven't really done much in uh, excavating that site. In fact, they say actually in Turkey, uh, there, there's more unexcavated uh, 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 ruins than any place else in the world. There's, you know, lots of uh, uh, fodder there for archaeologists for many years to come. They've only be, just begun, really the last few years, to do some excavations there in the city of Alexandria Troyes. And because of that, what they did have excavated to this point, we could really get up really close to, to everything. Nothing was barricaded off. And, main, and the main thing was there was hardly any people there. So we were practically, our bus was by ourselves. So we were there by ourselves. So uh, why do I mention this Alexandria Troyes? Because one section there that they did manage to uncover uh, was a section of about maybe 20 meters of the old Roman road that led from the city down to the port, down to uh, the port. And they had to dig down through the, the uh, debris, it looks like about a good maybe 10 or 15 feet. And they uncovered the road, the Roman road, and it's in absolutely pristine condition. It looks like it was just laid uh, yesterday because it was covered up for so many years. And I mention this because very likely St. Paul stepped on that road, he walked on that road. Because if we read in uh, the book of the Acts, chapter 16, verses 8 to 11, uh, Paul was on his second uh, missionary journey to Asia Minor, to present-day Turkey. And he had no intention of going any other place other than Turkey. He was making a circuit, he was passing through the towns and the villages and, and the cities, and he had come to Alexandria Troyes, and he had in his mind to continue on southward and eventually back to uh, Damascus and, and, and the Holy Land and to uh, uh, Jerusalem. But 
it mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles that he received a dream in the middle of the night. And a Macedonian appeared to him, or in other words, a Greek, and said, come to us, help us. And immediately, uh, Paul woke up, and he and his little, I guess, uh, his followers, there are two or three people, they immediately uh, changed their plans and booked their, their trip to, uh, 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 to Greece. And from there, they walked on that Roman road, very likely, very likely, down to, to the port where they, uh, where they got on that ship, and uh, they sailed over to, uh, to Greece or to Macedonia at that time, and began a whole new uh, mission, journey, in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Completely unexpectedly. He had, the day before, he had no idea and no desire to go there. But he realized that, uh, uh, he heard the voice of God in that dream, that Macedonian appeared to him and said, come to us, uh, help us, we need you. And when I was looking at that road and uh, uh, reading that, uh, that little piece of, uh, of Holy Scripture from the Acts, it suddenly uh, 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 it seemed to me uh, that, that we were, all of us, are just, I, w I was just like Paul himself. We are all just like St. Paul at that moment. Because each of us, each of us have received a call from God. Each of us have. You know, the original call for our vocation, God calling to us. For some of us it was more recently, for some of us it was many years ago, you know, uh, uh, and uh, under different circumstances. And uh, we answered that call uh, in different ways as well. Maybe for some of us we immediately answered the call of, uh, uh, of God to, to follow Him. Maybe for others of us it was more of a struggle. We had to discern more. But finally, we did make that decision, just like St. Paul, you know, we did make that decision to follow Jesus on a road that was completely unknown to us, that was completely foreign to us. And we, just like Paul, when he walked down that Roman road to the port and sailed off to, uh, to Macedonia, we set off on that road of our priestly vocation so many years ago. A road that, you know, at that time we did not know where it would lead, or what we would experience, where it would finish, or if we would even go very far along that road. But we, you know, I think because we're here today, after all those years, I think we can say that we were uh, faithful to that call of, uh, of Jesus, and we have been faithful up until, up until this day. And when you think of it, it was really a call into the unknown, a call to take a risk, a call to push the envelope, a call to reach out, to, to help, to serve, and to preach the Word of God. So very much, you know, I, when I was standing on that road, I felt that, you know, every priest, every servant of God is, uh, is very much, we can um, identify ourselves with Paul at that moment when he took his first steps along that road into an unknown journey, but he put his trust in the hands of God, as we do. Of course, many, many years have passed, uh, uh, 2,000 years almost, since, uh, 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 since Paul walked on that road. And as I mentioned, over the years, that road has been covered with debris, with the, you know, the debris of centuries, overgrown. It was uh, uh, hidden until the archaeologists uncovered it, swept away all that debris and that uh, dust and uncovered that road so that we could look at it. And again, this is sort of similar to our journey at, at, as well. Because in our, um, uh, in our, in our life as a, as a priest, in our life as a, in following Christ, in, in discerning and fulfilling our uh, priestly vocation, Time has passed, much time has passed since we have first heard that call, since we answered it so enthusiastically. And over time, the, you know, the debris of life perhaps have, uh, has covered our vocation path as well. The debris of life and the day-to-day -day cares and, uh, and everything else that comes with it. And perhaps uh, 
you know, it's difficult for us to, um, to remember or to understand or to recall that first fervor that we had when we made our foot, first steps along that road of our priestly vocation. That's why uh, um, times like this, retreats, or times when the brethren get together uh, for fellowship, it's a good time, this is a good time to, uh, we have to do this every so often, because it provides us an opportunity to sweep away the dust uh, over our life's path, to uncover that, uh, uh, that, that path of our priestly vocation, so that we can uh, 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 renew it and recall that, uh, that first maybe fervor and enthusiasm that we felt and restore it in us. We need to do that every so often. This is why it's so important to, uh, to come together for retreats. It's important for us to celebrate um, you know, significant uh, anniversaries in our priestly voyage, in our priestly journey. Uh, when we celebrate our 25th and God willing 50th and even 60th anniversaries of priestly service. Because these occasions, they, they give us the opportunity to sweep away the dust of the, of, uh, of the years, all the cares, all the preoccupations, all the frustrations, even all the temptations, uh, so, so that we can uh, renew our commitment to Jesus. So as we um, come to the end of this uh, uh, retreat this year, my dear brothers in, in, in Christ, I hope that... Uh, uh, through my talks and our fellowship here th this week, that in some small way that uh, we have managed to sweep away the dust from our vocation uh, path, and that we can see more clearly and recall, um, you know, that uh, uh, that the early fervor and enthusiasm that we had, and restore it in ourselves, so that we can continue to follow our vocation path uh, where the Lord will lead us. Thank you for this opportunity to for being here with you this week uh, to preach to you and to spend time with you. Slavi Susukra.